How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com. And today I want to talk to you about multi channel versus multi mono plugins, and more specifically, compressors. I've seen some people asking about this online, and it can definitely be a little bit confusing. So I thought I'd make this video to explain the difference between the two and show some examples of where you might want to use each one. So if you're a Pro Tools user, you might notice when you go to insert a plugin on a stereo channel that you have multi-channel plugin or multi-mono plugin. And for the most part, you have all the same options under each one. So you might be wondering, which one should I use? Well, let's start with talking about the difference between the two. So let's talk about multi-mono first. If we grab a multi-mono compressor here, this one will do. So this will literally be acting as two separate compressors, one that's acting only on the left channel and one that's only acting on the right channel. Alternatively, a multi-channel version of that same plugin looks pretty much the same, but this one, rather than acting as a separate left and right compressor, it's gonna be compressing both signals together. In other words, when this compressor is looking at the audio, it's going to sum the left and right channel together and compress based on that signal. So let's look at a couple examples to hopefully give you a better idea of the differences. And again, to help you choose which one to put on your tracks. So for our first example here, I have two guitars panned hard left and right being sent to my rhythm guitar bus, which is where I'm actually processing them. So here, if we bring up my compressor, you'll see that I'm using the multi mono version. Now, why is that? It's because this is two separate guitar parts, one take pan left and a double panned right. So by using a multi mono compressor, it's as if I put two compressors onto these tracks individually here. And the reason we want that is let's say the left guitar gets really loud for a second. By having this compressor in multi mono, the compressor is only going to turn down the left side. If we were using a multi channel version, when that left guitar got loud, it would turn down both the left and the right guitars, which would probably sound a little funny since the right guitar wasn't loud there. So right now we're looking at both sides of our compressor. This is the left channel, as you can see here, and then here is the right channel. Now, if we hit play on the guitars, they should be doing pretty similar amounts of compression. But let's say this left guitar got really loud for a minute. So we're gonna crank that up like eight, nine decibels. So now pay attention to the two meters here. So now the left side was compressing like 10 decibels, but the right side was still only doing like three or four. And despite the fact that our left guitar got so much louder, our guitars were still fairly balanced since the left compressor was compressing extra hard. That side was still a little bit louder, but certainly not as drastic as it would be without the compressor. So now for comparison, let's put a multi-channel version of that same compressor on. All right, so we have the same settings here, but now the compressor is gonna be looking at the combination of both the left and the right signals instead of each of them independently. And it's gonna apply the same gain reduction to both sides. We're getting that 10 decibels of compression again that the left side is triggering, but it's applying that to the right side as well. So now our two channels are really off balance. Let's just do a quick back-to-back. -back. So multi-channel. and multi-mono. Now this same concept would apply anytime you have two separate performances on the left and right side. For instance, another example would be background vocals. If you have a pair of doubles or a pair of harmonies on a single stereo track, you would probably want to use a multi-mono compressor to compress each vocal independently instead of both of them together. So let's take a look at another example. Here we have our drums, and I have two identical drum buses set up. And I'm just going to mute our parallel drum bus because we don't need that for this. And on each one, I've put an 1176. But on the left, we have a multi-channel. And on the right, we have a multi-mono. So let's play part of this song, and I'm going to flip back and forth, and we'll see if we can hear a difference. By the way, I am absolutely pummeling the drums with these compressors. I wanted to really overdo it with the compression just to make the differences extra obvious. So in general there, I don't think they sounded all that different. There's definitely a little bit of a difference, but it wasn't nearly as obvious as in our guitar example. 
To me, the multi-mono sounded slightly wider, which makes sense because the left and the right channel are bouncing a little bit differently, getting slightly different amounts of compression at any given moment. But then the multi-channel version felt a little tighter, a little more glued together. Let's go to a different section of this song and take another look at the drums. So right here we have a little build going on the floor tom and the snare. So let's listen to that with the multi-channel compressor first. So now let's take a look at that same build on our multi-mono. So that's a little funky, right? So what's going on there is there's a ton of energy over on the right side from that floor tom, and then we have the snare up the middle. So with the multi-mono compressor, the right side is really clamping down because of that floor tom. But since our snare is panned in the center, it's also bringing down all the snare that's in the left channel along with the floor tom. And then the right side isn't getting compressed nearly as hard because there's not as much going on in that channel. So because of that, it sounds like our snare moves way over to the left side. And then as it lets off, you can kind of hear it float back to the middle. So let's listen to that one more time and really pay attention in this little break right here. You'll hear what I was talking about where the snare kind of moves from the left to the right. And then it bounces back to the left again with that hit there. Now again, in a real world case, you probably wouldn't be compressing your drum bus anywhere close to this hard. So the amount of shift going on would be much more subtle. I just really wanted to exaggerate it so you could really hear it. But that's something you need to keep in mind when deciding which one to use. If you have a stereo signal, like a drum kit, but there are times when there's a lot of energy on one side or the other, that might be a good use for a multi-channel compressor. Because again, since it's looking at both the left and the right channels combined and compressing both sides equally, when that floor tom was pumping away in the right channel, it was also turning our left side down by the same amount. So our stereo image stayed the same and our snare stayed in the center. And let's take a look at one last example. Here I've loaded up a compressor on our mix bus and I'm using this one because it lets us switch between stereo and dual mono, which is the same thing as multi-channel and multi-mono, right in the plugin. So let's see if we can hear a difference. So pretty subtle, but we're also not doing a ton of compression. Let's crank up the compression a little bit and see if we can exaggerate the difference a little more. So even at those really extreme settings, it still wasn't a huge difference. Again, much like on our drums, the dual mono sounded just a tiny bit wider, but I actually preferred the stereo because it felt a little more compact and a little tighter, more glued together, which I kind of liked. But if you prefer the slightly wider feel of the dual mono, you just have to be cautious of any left and right imbalances in your track. This track is very balanced left and right. All the guitars are doubled. Everything else is pretty much sitting in the center. But in a song with a different arrangement where maybe you have a lead guitar off on the right channel, or if guitar's only on the left side in the verses, then you'll want to be careful with dual mono as it might shift the stereo image like it did to our drums and pull your vocals or whatever else out of the center. So if I were working on a mix like that, I would personally go with stereo just to avoid that. But like I said, I kind of preferred stereo here anyway. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful and cleared up a few things for you. If it did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And be sure to head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.